What do these things have in common? Ice baths, burpees, sunning your butthole, fasting, veganism, and the carnivore diet. That's what we're going to talk about today on the Strong for Life podcast. Thanks for all of you that are tuning in live through YouTube or the Become Strong for Life Facebook group. And if you're catching this on the podcast, whether it's Spotify, YouTube, Apple, wherever you catch it, uh, thanks for tuning in. And if you get the opportunity, please take a moment to rate, review, and share this episode because uh, I think some people are going to need to hear it. So let's get into, well, let's do some announcements first. So first of all, if you're tuning in for the first time, the Strong for Life podcast is for busy parents and professionals who just need need things handed to them. Need things simple, concise, and short. We keep each episode under 20 minutes to the best of my ability. Uh, and uh, yeah, we just pick a topic each week, usually something relevant, something helpful, something to make you think. And uh, just focus in on that. So let's look at announcements first. The Strong for Life Members Vault, the online mobile-friendly program and nutrition library, is going to go live at the end of this month. Should be good to go. So if you're not on the mailing list, please head over to the website, strongforlife.online. Grab one of the free resources or just sign up for the mailing list uh, newsletter at the bottom of the page. Get on the mailing list so you are in the know when the pre-sale goes up. So if you are interested in having programming and nutrition help in the palm of your hand at a very affordable rate, get in on the pre-sale because you get to keep that price for as long as you want. And that will only happen through the newsletter and for one week. So hop on there and stay tuned. Now, we started off talking about some things here. Ice baths, burpees, sunning your butthole, fasting, veganism, carnivore diet. We could throw in things like, ooh, CrossFit. There are so many things that some well-edited and popular internet video has told you is absolutely necessary for you to get the most out of your training, to get the most out of your health, to become the toughest person in the neighborhood. And the thing is, all these things, if you enjoy them, do them if you enjoy them and they bring value to you do them i'm not going to take those away from you i've been getting a lot of flack this last week on my statements around ice baths being no better than a slap in the face and uh burpees being absolutely terrible and generally not needed for anything i've been getting a lot of flack but all these arguments that people are coming up with are generally not arguments no one is coming at me with any facts no one is coming at me and saying hey it's actually this this is the good thing every single argument that someone has brought to me has come down to one thing how they feel about that individual thing i see it all the time with diets whether it's carnivore or paleo or vegan i see it all the time with lifestyle choices like fasting and sunning your butthole it all comes down to no this is the best thing that's ever happened to me this makes me feel good. The big thing they all have in common is the emotional attachment and the social circle that you have with that activity. Ice baths are cool, pun intended, because all your friends are doing it, because Joe Rogan's doing it, because Cameron Haynes is doing it, because so-and-so tough guy on the internet had a really nice video and said, this is the way to get tough. All of these come down to your emotions and your attachment to something and a social circle or cult around it and it's getting in the way of your success it is hindering your ability to actually get to where you want to be and i've worked with a lot of these people people who are like oh veganism veganism changed my life well now it's carnivore carnivore changed my life i have never been tougher since i started doing ice baths i feel absolutely amazing since sunning my butthole these are all personal anecdotes. These are all personal stories. Fasting, fasting is another one. Uh, and I'll, I'll go into more detail with that on another episode. Uh, the problem is none of these people ever get to where they want to be. They keep applying the same supposed solution 
to their problems, whether it's weight loss, getting stronger, getting more alive, feeling great. And they keep applying the same thing and getting diminishing returns over time. But because of their emotional attachment, because of the emotional attachment of their social circle, they keep doing it and expecting something better to happen. And when we look at the, the dietary things, fasting, veganism, carnivore, paleo, whatever, keto, everybody starts off and they feel amazing. Everyone continues, they plateau, see no more results, the weight doesn't change, their physique doesn't change, and they go, ah, I just need to buckle down and do this harder. I'm not jacked, I need to eat less more often. Why don't I look the way I want? I just need to eat more sticks of butter to stay in ketosis. And every single time, it's this emotional attachment to some activity that makes them feel part of a social circle, a club, a gang. And that makes them keep going, even though they're not necessarily getting benefits from it. And for whatever reason, burpees is in that category. People love burpees. And I've had a few people come at me and they're like, you're trying to make people actively weak. I'm like, because I don't think burpees are good. I could give you 10 things that are way harder. If you enjoy burpees, they're not tough for you anymore. If you enjoy suffering, great, suffer. But why would you suffer if it's not helping you reach your goals? If you're trying to reach a point, if you're trying to gain muscle, lose fat, if you're trying to be healthier, if you're trying to be more resilient, the solution to those problems is not a one-size-fits-all situation. You need to find the thing that suits you to help you get to where you want to be. It's a lot of use. But I hope you're getting the picture here that it's all about what gets you to where you want to be. It's about you. You're a magical snowflake. You're not going to have the same solutions that everyone else is going to have. If you love ice baths, they're probably not that tough for you. If you're afraid of physical altercation, you need to embrace that. Find your weakness and work on that. Once you're comfortable with a tough thing, you're no longer doing a tough thing. It's not tough for you anymore. Just because you think and feel that something is super beneficial for you, if you're not taking metrics, if you're not measuring and weighing and checking out where you started and how you're progressing, that one thing that you love doing, whether it's the way you eat or the temperature of your bath or where you like to get sun on your body, it's not helping you. Your emotional attachment and your social circle around something does not mean it's working for you. And that's going to be hard for people to hear. And I see this a lot with diets, you know, fasting. I don't want to go too much into fasting because I'm going to do a whole episode on that. But fasting is a big one. Dietary choices are a big one because people are incredibly emotionally invested in the ideology behind it. Fasting is the single most healthy thing you can do. Well, not if you want to gain muscle. Also, why is it that everyone that I see that's doing fasting for weight loss, why aren't they losing weight? Because there's no consistency, because there's a rebound effect, because they're applying a solution to the problem that isn't suited to them. Ultimately, it all comes down to why are you emotionally attached to something that's not giving you results? That's the question you have to ask. I don't have a lot more to say on this. I just keep seeing this coming up. You don't like burpees? It must be because you want everyone to be weak. Oh, you don't think ice baths are particularly useful? It's because you're trying to actively stop people in society from getting tougher. I proposed an alternative. If you think ice baths are making people tougher and you're comfortable with that, I want you to try my slap in the face a day. I think that's a great solution. If you're afraid of getting slapped in the face every day, sounds like you need to do some toughening up. Toughen yourself up by doing something that you're uncomfortable with. That's all getting tough is. Continuing to do things you are uncomfortable with. Someone asked in the Instagram comments, you know, what's a underrated or not heard of exercise that can be used for resilience? Doesn't matter what the exercise is. Just take it to near failure. Take it to absolute failure and do that regularly. That'll toughen you up and it's targeted toward what you want to achieve. 
you want bigger shoulders and you want to get tougher, press heavy things over your head until it's almost going to crush you. That's going to be better than burpees. If you want to be generally better to deal, be, better able to deal with stress, build your resilience, you can apply the same formula. Find something you're weak at, find something you're uncomfortable with, find something that is lacking and take it to an extreme that is uncomfortable. That's how you get tougher. Ice baths aren't magic. Burpees aren't magic. Fasting's not magic. Veganism is definitely not magic. All of these have some benefit, but they're not perfect and they're not necessarily suited for you. And some of them have legitimate detriments. So don't get caught up in stuff that's all feel good because of the stuff you see on the internet. It's all feel good. We're part of this cool community where we all get together and freeze our balls off. Uh, and then huzzah, we're all homies now. That's good. Social interactions are good. Emotional investment in things is good, but not to the detriment of things you actually want to achieve. So think about it. If when I bring up ice baths and burpees and your particular diet and whatever trendy thing is on Instagram and TikTok, if I bring that up and say that's probably not the best thing for you and you immediately get mad, check yourself. Look into that. Because you're probably not actually invested in the movement or the activity or the lifestyle. You're invested to your connection to it. And there's probably something that's more useful to you. So sort your emotions out. Do the things that actually get you to where you want to be. Regardless of how trendy they are. That's it. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be uh, talking about this more moving forward. Enjoy your week.